Road to Calgary 2013. Um, I've been sponsored by Mustad to make the shoes and gi give my methods for making the shoes. The first one I'm going to start with is the Cork and Wedge Hunter Hind Pony 5838 Concave. With Concave, the does have a little bit more difficulty making heels on it because you're dealing with something that's a hollow section, not a solid section. First thing we're going to do is look at the outside edge. You can see we've got an upright section and then a concave inner section. And we've got a hollow section right through the middle where the full ring goes. So to make that solid, what I'll do is I'll bump it up first. And when I bump it up, I'll narrow it back up to 5 eighths. But I'll hit the concave inner edge so that I end up with a more symmetrical section. If I end up with a symmetrical section, it'll make it easier for me to make a cork. Then on the other end, I'll bump it and I'll close up the section a little so that I get a solid lump to make my wedge from. I've got a short heat and bump it up. Back together, I'll hit the inside, the concave edge. By doing that, I'm making a fairly symmetrical end on the concave, and this will make it easier to make the corking out of. I'll bring it out with the wedge. I just fo I fold the outside corner into center, just like forging a heel. Now I'll bump it, keeping it straight. As it gets wider, bring it back together, bring it back to 5 eighths. Once we've got material there, the next thing I'll do is I'll bring the corner up. I'll try not to hit the bearing surface, I'll only try and hit the end of the ground surface. And I'll pull the wedge up into a point. What I've done, I've brought it up to a point. And basically, I have similar angle on the inside and the outside, and the top of the wedge the center of the bar stock. When I come out of the fire now, I'm going to fold the concave just behind the quarters, and I'm going to fold it from zero at the just behind the quarters, and so I fold it over so this edge is touching, so it looks like you've safed the heel of a normal shoe. I take the end of my hammer and just fold the edge, the concave over the center, pull it up on the edge of the anvil. The hammer blow half on the anvil and half on the wedge. Set it down to just about half thickness. Take away the distortion towards the back and the front angles of the wedge. Pull it up to the center to make a point. Put a flat top on it. The first thing I do is I try to create the lines that are in the picture where the concave runs to center. So I, where the concave's been squashed, I take the rasp and I create new lines. The back like a heel. So I'm trying to sculpt this into something that looks like it's growing out of the shoe. A lot of the shoes are gonna look the same. So it's the quality of the heels that will really make the difference when it comes to the judging. We've got our wedge finished, it's rasped up. We can look at the features of the wedge. We can see that the concave runs all the way along and then starts to come to center like a safe heel. So we've got a nice finished area in front of the wedge. It's got a concave inner edge, safing on the outside edge. The wedge itself leans slightly to the inside, so it's a really safe wedge. What we're looking for is the features that are in the picture of the Calgary program. When I come out of the fire next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing as I did to the inside. I'm going to fold the concave over from zero just behind the quarters, folding the concave to the center of the heel cork. So I visualize where the heel cork is and I'll fold it to that point. Then I'm going to put the heel cork over the edge of the anvil and set it just about an eighth of an inch, about three millimeters, right half on and half off the anvil, just to put a little check in the back, so then it'll make it easier for the heel cork to bend. Half on, half on, half off the anvil, just check it, turn it over, and bend up your heel cork. Make 
sure we get a nice right angle. Now we've got a good solid piece of metal to make my heel cork from. And now what's important is not to drive it down too fast. If we drive it down on the top too fast, we're going to get cold shuts in it. What's important is to contain the distortion. So if we hit it on the top and the sides start to distort, we have to contain the distortion. Then we have to contain the distortion. Contain the distortion. And normally, not more than three hits on any side. Start to just thin it in front of the heel cork just a little. And we look at it on the back side, on the hoof surface. What I'm looking for is to create a heel check. So it's not just hitting the heel cork, it's hitting right up to where you got your heel check. And the heel check continues right through the cork. So we're at the point, we're now ready to rasp up the heel cork. When I rasp it up, I want to try to define the concave in front of the heel cork so it has the lines like the picture. I'm going to put a radius on the back of the heel cork to mimic the picture. First thing I want to do is define the concave inside edge to try and make it look like the picture so that the concave runs like normal. Now we're going to define the concave on the outside edge. Next thing, last the front of the heel cork and clean the top. The last thing I'll do is shape the heel cork. Clean it with a file. We've got our finished cork. If we look now, we can see that our concave runs just past where the quarters would be and then runs to center. And it does the same thing on the inside. Now they've taken time to put the lines in the picture. We're trying to capture that feature. And I've got a nice little heel cork, very clean front, rounded back just like the picture. When we mark the middle of the toe, we want the outside a little longer. The picture's showing about half a heel cork longer on the outside. Bending the toe carefully. By hitting it gently, it helps prevent any excess twisting of the concave. So then I don't have to forge it very hard to take out any twists. I'm going to take it to the horn, and I'm going to fold over the concave to safe the toe. And I'm going to push the concave in. I'm not pulling it towards me, or that will cause the bearing surface to become uneven. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing into the concave with my hammer at an angle. We've created our toe bend and we've safed the outside edge. The next thing to do would be to mark the nail holes. Mark the other one. When we make our heel nails, we'll punch the outside heel nail just a little further back than on the inside. Basically, one thickness of the punch further back on the outside. When we go to bend the outside branch, it can be a little bit difficult to hit right at the end of the branch without damaging your cork in. Some people will bend the last inch of the steel with the round of their hammer. So I'll hold it on the opposite toenail to what I'm going to bend. I bend the last piece of my shoe, take it to the horn, bend my quarters. Just flatten the shoe lightly. We've got to be gentle so we don't damage the concave. Our toenail, and one in the middle. I always like to level before I do my final punching on the nail holes. So I've leveled it. I'll go back in with my stamp. And now I'll put chill. Yep, bent it gently to the end. The more hammer blows, 
the smoother the bends will be. You don't have to forge it hard, just take out any little twist that's developed, and now we can punch our nail holes. Heel nail, toe nail, and one in the middle. Through with the punch again. This way, the nail holes will be cleaner because you've punched right to the bottom of the material. And now the pixel's just got to pop it out. A little bit of pitch on the nail holes, not much on the inside. Okay, coming to our clips. I would choose a cross peen hammer. The reason for this is we don't have much room between the nail holes for the clips. If we use a ball peen, we're likely to damage our nail holes. Put the shoe over the edge of the anvil, about an eighth of an inch, then drive the cross beam like it's trying to hit the corner of the anvil. Don't go too fast. Got my source material. Let's level it a little. Go to the edge of the anvil. Flatten your source material. Once you've got your source material to shape, then come up the middle of the clip with the corner of your hammer. Level behind the clip, and I always turn the clip towards myself when I'm leveling behind it. That way, if I miss and hit the clip, it'll just bend out. We give our final leveling. Just gently back punch the holes. Don't want to open them up too much, just square the corners. So the final operation is to check our nail holes, make sure they fit for the Mustard MX-50. Okay. So, finished chew.